What's going on guys, it's Sean here and I am back today to give you guys a review of the Nike Air Tailwind 79 OG in the vast grey and photo blue colorway. These drop on October 23rd for 100 US dollars or $140 here in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is vast grey, light photo blue and midnight navy. So I was away on vacation when these dropped, but luckily for me I was able to pick these up at one of the Nike stores in Hong Kong. And despite being a sneaker that's a little bit more out of left field because, let's face it, this is usually not the type of shoe that I would be buying, these Air Tailwinds are super important to Nike's history and as a result, I really wanted to add these to my collection. So for those of you guys who don't know, this Nike Air Tailwind is actually the very first sneaker by Nike that features Nike Air Sole Cushioning. So some of you guys may be confused, so the Air Max 1 is the first Nike sneaker to feature visible air, but in terms of actually having the air technology within the shoe, these tailwinds were the very first. The original version of this shoe was designed by former NASA engineer Frank Rudy. He developed the concept of implementing air within a sneaker to provide durable and responsive cushioning for runners. So long story short, Nike liked what they saw and then these tailwinds debuted back in 1978 at the Honolulu Marathon in Hawaii. One year later in 1979, Nike would then release these in larger quantities, making them available to the general public. Safe to say, people were very receptive of the air cushioning, and the rest is history. So these tailwinds come in an OG inspired box. So right off the bat you can see this is not your typical Nike sportswear or Nike performance box. It has a really really retro vibe to it. So we have this world map at the top, we have Nike swooshes and Nike branding found all over the box. And this is supposed to mimic the original box from 1979, except colored in blue. Inside the box they also provided us with this vintage looking pair of socks with this Nike branding at the top in this photo blue color. So moving on to the actual sneaker, Nike claims that they studied the original sneaker from 1979 and tried as closely as possible to recreate this shoe using modern day manufacturing techniques. So the majority of the upper is constructed using this mesh, which is colored in vast grey. Found on the frontal edge of the shoe, we have a suede toe guard. Stitched onto the mid panel of both the lateral side and the medial side of the sneaker, we have this oversized leather swoosh in photo blue. Towards the back of the shoe, on the bottom we have this suede, and at the top this is covered in leather with the word Nike stamped in white. Running up the center area of the shoe where the eyelets are, once again we have more suede which gives you added durability. The laces in this case is an off-white colored flat style lace. Underneath the laces we have the tongue, so this is a foam padded nylon tongue that's colored in off-white. At the very top we have this Nike tag, and the edges of the tongue are unfinished which exposes the foam that's sandwiched in the middle. As for the insole, so these come with a white colored insole with Nike branding on the heel in black. And I want to point out that these insoles have this additional arc support and it's glued on to the medial edge of the insole. So the upper of these air tailwinds sits atop this white colored foam midsole. Encapsulated within the midsole, we have a 3 quarter length Nike air sole unit. Turning these over to the bottom, so here we have your outsole which is completely constructed out of black rubber with this waffle traction pattern. In the very center we have the location of Nike's world headquarters which is Beaverton, Oregon. In terms of sizing I feel like these tailwinds actually fit really big. So I wear between a size 10 or 10 and a half in most of my Nike sneakers. But when I tried on the size 10 they fit me huge. So as a result I was able to go down to a size 9.5 which fit me pretty well from a width perspective but there was even still a little bit extra room in the toe box than I would have liked. So to be safe I'd say go down half a size but if you have narrow feet then you might be able to even go down a full size. These do kind of run a little bit more on the narrow and long side though. So if you do have wide feet be prepared that your feet might experience some discomfort specifically around this forefoot area as your foot might be spilling out the edges. From a comfort standpoint, so these tailwinds actually surprised me quite a bit. For a shoe that originally debuted back in the late 70s, when I wore these, I don't know if it's because it's like a modern day construction of an old school sneaker, but I could actually really feel the air cushioning underneath my feet. There was quite a bit of feedback and responsiveness, especially underneath the heel for me. So overall, these were a pleasant surprise from a comfort standpoint. So with all that being said, now let's lace these up and I'll show you guys how these look on feet.
you guys love Nike or you just love sneakers in general, you cannot deny the significance of these Nike Air Tailwinds. I love the story these tell, and I like how Nike really elevated it by giving you special edition packaging and the extra socks as well. Regardless of all that though, this is still a very nice looking sneaker, and the color scheme of vast gray with hits of photo blue and navy honestly makes this shoe a pretty easy sneaker to wear as well. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the Nike Air Tailwind 79 OG. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram at esco8, check out my Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys like this video and possibly learned a little bit about Nike's history. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.